So uh, I'm calling to order the uh, May 30th, 2024 meeting of the Concord Transportation Advisory Committee. And uh, I'm going to call the roll. Uh, Laura? Here. Dan? Here. Nick? Here. And myself. So we have four out of seven people here. Uh, so we have a quorum. Um, first uh, order of business is minutes. We don't have minutes ready to approve. So we'll push that off till next time. Would anyone um, like to agree to take minutes or uh, prepare minutes of this meeting for next time? Can we? I can work my computer. Um, and, and we can be done from the recording too. <laughs> we can, <laughs> I shouldn't do it because I have to finish the meeting minutes from last time. Yeah. Okay. We can. We can. Uh, I thought the house will be recording here. Yeah. Uh, in a couple of days. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'll do it. Okay, thanks, Nick. That's that's great. So chair's report, I uh, don't have a lot to say. There'll be some things um, in the later agenda items to talk about. But um, one comment is that um, at the um, uh, at the last meeting, when uh, Mr. Posner left uh, at like 10 of 11, I think it was, um, uh, we lost our quorum. So the meeting finished, but there were uh, uh, there was a sub forum conversation then, and a little bit before then, I think too, um, Peter Lee from the um, who's the chair of the Haywood Meadow Stewardship Committee was making a request that they have some crossing safety concerns. Um, uh, Do you want me to read those? Yeah. Those why don't comments? you? Yeah, if you can read those into the you know yeah, into the meeting now in front of for the rest of the members. Um, so the all of the comments that we received at the end of last meeting, um, Terry Ackerman started. She thanked Elizabeth Hughes for her update and recommended um, that there be a regular update from the planning division at every meeting. Um, and she also conveyed that uh, Meg, Megan Samudo uh, recommended that jurisdiction over the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Committee's work go to the Public Works Committee um, or the Bu Public Works Commission, excuse me. Um, and then um, uh, Peter Lee of 140 Walden Street. He is the chair of the Haywood Meadow Stewardship Committee, um, which is a subcommittee of the Natural Resources Committee. Um, but he was speaking on his own behalf. Uh, he said the committee has raised uh, uh, the the crossing as a safety issue, but no action has been taken on improving the crossing for pedestrians at Haywood Meadow. He reiterated his concern about um, pedestrian safety along the paths through Haywood Meadow, and they're asking us to consider this safety issue and make recommend and make a recommendation to the traffic management group as soon as possible. If you want to elaborate on that, that's what I have. Okay. Reported. So um, yeah. So I think. Uh, working with with Elizabeth um, and possibly Delia Kay because the, um, as Elizabeth reminded me, Haywood Meadow is a subcommittee of the um, uh, Natural Resources uh, Commission. Um, we'll figure out how to kind of pursue this in the future. I do think that um, uh, a couple of important things are they're raising a crossing safety concern, which is not exactly um, where their charge is focused, but it's certainly um, uh, important and it, and it relates to TAC. And another uh, point I think worth making is that there's some history there where the, uh, apparent, the, the Haywood Meadow Committee has gone to the traffic management group, has come to the TAC before quite some time ago, and um, they uh, still have the concerns and in fact, that um, place in town uh, is rather, has a lot of features. There's um, two um, somewhat complex, heavily used intersections um, that, uh, you know, obviously interact with traffic and crossings. There's trails that cross there. Um, you know, it's so it, it's something that might actually be um, worthwhile uh, as a kind of a, a case study or something where the TAC um, would um, serve to gather 
all kinds of information about needs. And um, I actually brought this up as a private, you know, public comment at the trails committee meeting just on Tuesday morning. And at least one, because I figured some of those people being out on the trails might have special information that was useful about the crossings. And um, at least one person said they were going to write to me. They live near there and they have a lot of information. So if we can, if we can get all this kind of complexity of the problem out there, maybe we can enable um, further process to improve things. I, this is really a question about this, but um, you know, since we've we've already discussed this in one of our meetings, and I've, I'll say that I personally went out and looked at the mm -hmm. intersection, mm -hmm. and I guess if we're going to have a conversation or or send recommendations, I hope that we can tease out the difference between policy concerns mm -hmm. and the design, engineering, mm -hmm. and sort mm -hmm. of budget process, because that's not our charge. Our our no. charge is not no. to go into an intersection and say, well, we think that the crosswalk should be this big, because there's we have an engineering department that understands all of the constraints uh, around, you know, the the policy, you know, the, the state, state and federal design policies and things. But, you know, for something like Hayward Meadow, I think the question for me, like the policy concern that we can help with is how do we prioritize our resources? You know, like how are we going to prioritize our resources to make sure that we can we have enough funding for projects like Haywood Meadow? And where should it be in the priority list mm -hmm. with all of the other safety concerns that have been raised mm -hmm. in all of the other contexts right. that we've been right. in? Um, you know, I hope that that's why I keep coming back to like we need to have some kind of a framework for establishing like how much foot traffic is it? How big of a safety concern is it? You know, so that we can say like, this needs to be prioritized over these other projects because we have a finite amount of money to spend on any reconstruction right. project. Well, I think uh, to, me, to me, there's a, 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 a few things to try to um, separate out, as you say, and not confuse. And um, it actually, I think, um, is interesting because it also, uh, to me, fits with um, uh, uh, further consideration by us or the town staff as to the um, appropriate role of the TAC and the charge. So one thing that I think that is clear here is there are some needs being expressed and they've been expressed over time. And there's... Um, uh, in that location, there are multiple needs because of multiple uh, transportation modes interacting. Uh, even motorists have problems just with other motorists. Um, so I think I think that um, the needs, getting the needs out there, is certainly separate from looking for solutions or prioritizing uh, where funding or or, or uh, design work is done, and then. As we had said in some previous meetings, um, uh, perhaps some particular case studies or locations that have uh, that exemplify some of the complex interactions in town are are useful for developing policy. Because, for example, you know um, Haywood Meadow, the charge of that committee has all kinds of things about historical significance. Mm -hmm. There are uh, uh, paths through there. That are used by tourists to get to the museum and the Emerson House and all that. So um, it's it's a it's a tough nut to crack, but it's one that might be extremely informative for the policy making and for um, uh, where tax role is vis a vis TMB, uh, et cetera. So I, I don't know if you have any comments you wanted to add, Elizabeth, to that. But okay, no. but we'll we'll communicate with the with uh, with. Um, uh, What's the action? Peter. <laughs> well, I think I, right now, from the chair's point of view, I'm going to take advice from Elizabeth and, and Delia and, and try to figure out um, how best to, um, uh, you know, where where Haywood Meadows committee requests need to go and how we handle it. I think well, that's... So you're just going to do that personally or...? Well... What yeah, we... I'll coordinate with, uh, with Delia. So Delia will speak with Peter Lee and the chair of the commission. Yeah, I, I think the last one of the Peter Lee is the chair. No, the chair of the oh, commission. Oh, come here. Yeah, who's the chair of the NRC right now? Uh, right now, it's um, uh, Sarah Grimwood. Okay. 
So, so this is also, I think, useful just in terms of figuring out, you know, a select board and other people have, and the and um, uh, town manager and deputy town manager have talked, heard them talk about how to get the various entities working together more yeah. productively, and it's part of our, you know, uh, charge to work with other committees. So mm -hmm. this is a good I, I think, case in point. I think one of the last points Mark made in the uh, in his words was. Uh, important, which is the identification of all of the different uh, constituencies that have needs there. And, you know, some of them are sort of can be overlooked. For instance, the pro if the problem is presented by people who are concerned about, you know, tourists, and, you know, Hayward Meadow and walkers and stuff like that, the motorists have a huge concern there because it's, it's as it is, it's kind of a problematic. The, the pair of intersections are linked. And they're as if they were one huge dispersed intersection. And, you know, public safety, the fire department's right there. The police department have to go through that intersection. Um, school children, there's just a lot of needs there. And I think the most important thing isn't so much which committee, but what are all of the needs, yeah. just so we can get them on the table and figure out who's going to deal with them. Well, there's also a historic element to yeah, certain exactly. intersections yeah, exactly. in right. the community. Right. So yeah. maybe... You know, maybe not so much um, Walden and Haywood, but there's there's historical significance where Haywood and comes out on Lexington. I mean, that, right? Yeah, that that's way, what I'm saying. Or, that's that's. So. I think in terms of planning and in need, that's all one thing that has to be considered. Both of um, those. No, things. I I I don't I don't think so because if you know that that free right on from Haywood right. and Walden or free left. Yeah. Um that that's not his that was not historically there. Right. So um, you know, there's ways to improve that intersection from a bike, pedestrian, and vehicle safety. Mm -hmm. Um, and because right now part of the issue with that, you know, crossing is um a mid-block crosswalk. It doesn't meet um it doesn't meet the requirements for um safety and sight distance for a mid block crosswalk because of that free right free, that free left because of that? um and and in and sight distance because of that turn and right. so there's there are ways to a, address that where right. a, a crosswalk in that location m may work but um i don't think both intersections have to be ad addressed to make it work there Okay. Um, and and again, that's you know, as you said, that's okay. a conversation with, you know, identifying yeah. all the people that have yeah, as a, long as a the fire, pin on that spot. As long as the fire engines can make the right turn if the slip lane goes away. Uh, that's pretty much um, all the fire chief cares about. Yeah. Right. Um, is that they can make the um, turns and swings and um, so, and then and then as you said, it just it comes down to. You know, there's that spot. There's there's a lot of issues and concerns being raised with, um, you know, Maine and Sudbury, and mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, you know, whether yes. pedestrian safety can be addressed there, but yeah. also you you have to be able to maintain certain vehicle turning it's, movements and like as a motorist, it's very yeah. confusing what the but right thing historically, is to um, <laughs> that intersection is historically right. that configuration. Um, but historically, they you know the road was probably only you know ten ten feet wide, <laughs> so. But how do you pri prioritize both of those? Because they both get a lot of pedestrian, bicycle, vehicle, mm -hmm. visitor traffic as well. Okay, so anyway, I just I just want want to say that so that what I see here is that that and listening to what you're uh, adding here is that there is um, uh, a relatively narrow request that um we kind of need to just you know help determine where that goes but there's also um a kind of a nexus of different transportation modes and challenges above and beyond uh, one particular uh hypothetical place for a crosswalk safe crosswalk so um you know i also think that trails trails can be moved and there's questions of signage there's um questions of um you know there is a sidewalk on the other side of um lexington uh, road and um but there are not many crossings to it and those also interact with this so i think there's a narrow question about what do we do with respond to heavy metal committee and then there's potentially tact interest in 
uh, a larger, larger <coughs> expanded view of this because. So um, I want to move on, move along. Um, with regard to the requests that we started compiling for the MBTA, I still think that is a really good thing because getting these needs out and kind of flagging for staff what they can say to the MBTA, um, it isn't just one request, but we have all these things. Who do we talk to and how do we mm -hmm. kind of negotiate this and make it a two-way street with the MBTA because they want things from the town too, off and on. Um, uh, there was a couple of additional things to add. One is that there was that, um, I, I was not able to attend it, but there was some kind of presentation about uh, funding specifically for um, uh, railroad uh, bridges or underpasses or something like that. Grade crossings. Grade, or maybe grade crossings, whatever. But um, uh, Nick had mentioned to me separately that there's, um, some locations where, um, you know, putting on our master list of uh, transportation uh, in town infrastructure interacting with the MBTA, there are some um, places where the roads go under or uh, across the tracks that we might want to highlight the condition of that, uh, you know, they're not, uh, you know, user friendly or safe or, um, you know, cycle. There's no some cases no place for pedestrians that's safe, and some places um, where bicycles would uh, cyclists would have to share the road with the cars, but it's not necessarily indicated to the automobiles that they have to share in that area. So I think there's some places where um, those could be added. Um, Laura, did you or or go to that um, meeting, MBTA related meeting? Do you have anything to report? Well, so I went to two meetings. Okay. Um, the first meeting was I went to the 250th. There was a, a conversation about transportation around the 250th. Who ran the meeting? Um, it was, was it a state state meeting? It was it was a sort of like coalition meeting of oh. people from all different towns. A few people from the MBTA, a few people from MassDOT. I think that the sort of like the the coalition of towns mm -hmm. that are working together on the 250th. There's like four towns. That I think that was the in. group that convened the meeting. Um, and um, so I went, there were two representatives from MBTA and one representative from MassDOT there. And mostly it was like an overview of like, when are the events happening and, you know, what's being planned and where are things shifting? Um, and then it was sort of an initial conversation about transportation needs. And um, I had an opportunity to like insert, like what are some of Concord's concerns around transportation on the June 50th? So um, I didn't have a lot of time to say much, but I, you know, and there was a lot of talk about buses, regional buses outside of what I said. But one of the things that I highlighted was, um, is, are, are there plans to improve accessibility at the Concord Depot train station? Um, so that people who uh, have trouble getting up and down the stairs can get yeah. off the train in Concord Center. Um, and the, uh, the representative from the MBTA said, you should watch the board meeting the next day. <laughs> and so I went and I watched two hours of the five hour and board the, meeting, nothing? but I did, not, oh, okay. I did not learn what the announcement I, was. I haven't learned anything either. Yes. Okay, um, this is again where but, you need some engagement, you know, with these people. <laughs> yeah, I, I did attend two hours of the meeting, but oh, it thank was- you. I, oh, I, and I know you I, 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 I them, tried to, but I was traveling and I yeah. kept dropping in and out. And okay. and yeah. But I think, I think our-, our um... So I'm, I'm just on a side note, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow up. Yeah. And yeah. See what yeah, thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. I think that the uh, I think that the the gist that I got was they are working on accessibility mm -hmm. in a system level. Right. right. And um uh and there there are hopefully going to be some plans to upgrade stations, but I don't know how Concord fits into it. Elizabeth, do you know um uh, in the division of responsibility between the MBTA and Keolis Who's responsible for things like accessibility upgrades? Is it Keolis, does Keolis deal with the infrastructure at the stations at all, um, or they just run the trains? I think they just yeah. run the trains. So I, I, so I think they they're also responsible for for maintenance. Mm -hmm. you know, so like, like track, snow clearing, they would yeah, do. and snap, yeah, and track, you know, maintenance okay. and and all of that. But any any upgrades, 
that comes from MBTA okay. down and um and then I don't know there may be a there may be a construction division of Keolis mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. when you know awarded or you know told you know this is your next project. I think if it is, I think it's just for the rail the right of way. The, the tracks I, and, I and switches and yeah. controls. Because they own all the they manage at least all the all the locomotives and all the rolling stock. Yeah. So I think just just to finish sure. uh, mm -hmm. sort of my update is I think the most important thing for this committee to be aware of is that MBTA is going to need a firm list of asks from communities about what they want for the 250th. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's a good thing to put on an upcoming agenda to say like what what are the what from our perspective what are the most high priority transportation needs to support the 250th whether that be you know more service um, you know some kind of a temporary or permanent accessibility platform at Concord Depot bus patterns. Um, uh, you know, even like things like pedestrian signage, we could talk about, um, you know, I think that that's a great conversation mm -hmm. for us to do a little brainstorming, at least have a list of asks that the town can use when they're making asks of MBTA. Well, and can you, can, so um, I would ask, don't be perfectionistic about the minutes. The minutes of last meeting captured some of those things, right? Yes. So, so well, those, even those were more broad of right. like but, MBTA but we can, generally. We can add some and then we can fill, you know, prioritize yes. them. Yes. And Elizabeth, there's, uh, there are, there must be various groups in the 250th focused on transportation and- Oh, there's a lot of that. people focused on transportation. Right. Is there, um, is there anything mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, would it be a good idea for somebody to give either a written or an in-person update on that to tack or not? Mm -hmm because um, I had a conversation with Nick and he was also kind of raised a really important point, which was um, this is sort of a stress test for transportation and we might actually learn things from it that we could apply going forward. Uh, you know, this worked, this didn't work. Uh, so so how, how, you know, there's, how can we- There's actually a, a four town intermunicipal agreement mm -hmm. to deal with transportation. Okay. Um, and, and specifically so that, dealing with um, you know, coordination with, you know, road closures and it's um, Arlington, Lincoln, Lexington, and Concord. Okay. So those. So is that in the document available online? Is it in so, the living document um, government government keeps changing? changing? Sorry, one person at a time. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm not, I, you know, I, I don't, I'd have to, I don't know if it's, look, if it's online. Um, anyway, we, you know, we would like to follow that for sure. And maybe weigh in some things. I think. Right? Yeah. Specifically, um, the two fifty. Well, yes. uh, we it yes. would be good to. Yeah, that's specifically for the two fifty. Yeah. And I, in fact, the four town group is um, um, putting out a request for proposals to hire a transportation coordinator. Okay. To, mm -hmm. to manage mm -hmm. uh, the fleet of you know, you know shuttle bus buses satellite parking lots mm -hmm. um, and to mm -hmm. you know to actually oversee and manage that and um they've been coordinating with the mbta mbta is looking into like express service from alewife mm -hmm. um all the way out to concord you know like through the four town all the way out to concord um they're looking at <clears throat> an option for you know, they currently have it's like a ten dollar weekend pass. Mm -hmm. You can ride the train. Is extending that out starting on Friday, extending it through um, Monday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so that that group is looking at um, at that, but it is specifically for um, you know April nineteenth. Mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that it was agreed that. There's sort of going to be a subgroup of the public safety group that's going to be sort of the the holder of the transportation piece. Is that the structure that was discussed? There was a lot of dis discussion at this meeting about who is going to be in charge of the transportation piece. Is there, it there? There's a a, a it's a, a transportation group. Okay, that's, that's separate, made up that, or that's part of the part the of the public safety the group. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But it's it's between the four towns, not individual towns. 
uh, it's not, it's the four yeah. towns are four coordinating towns. all coordinating. of this. Okay. All right. Well, we, I think we, you know, we would love information about this and follow, may have things to uh, remind them of, and um, we may certainly learn things. Are you the delegate to that? Yeah. Who is, who is, who on staff is? Um, so um, myself, Beth Williams, um, and then Rob Monroe, mm -hmm. who's mm -hmm. the chair of that transportation subcommittee. Okay. Um, so as far as that that IMA, so he's he's a, a, a member of the um, 250th executive committee, yes. and he's yes. focused on transportation. Okay. It, it, yes, among other things. <laughs> but this is only this is only for the 250th. Right, right, yeah. right. <clears throat> um, so that was my update. I'll, I'll leave okay. it at that. All right. So I, just uh, to kind of finish up with the MBTA thing, one of the things that I think um, is uh, potentially, you know, useful, as I said, PEC can help, you know, taking public input and, and filtering, et cetera, try to um, identify, you know, various needs and gaps uh, that would be helpful that would involve um, uh, MBTA uh, offering something, funding something, doing something. And um, part of this, my hope anyway, would be that this could help um, staff um, uh, in a more um, supported way um, bring these things to the MBTA because uh, I've heard, you know, anecdotally that, you know, there is a MB, uh, a, a, um, a long-standing MBTA um, sort of committee that meets with a representative from each town, but I've heard that it's not very effective. So if we could figure out more effective ways to interacting with MBTA management, and again, the Keolis subcontracting complicates things in some ways, but I think, I think we need a more forceful and effective, we need to develop a more forceful and effective way of you know presenting needs to MBTA in any way that TAC can help with that I think is important. So one of the things that I did find um, useful about attending the two hours of the five hour mm -hmm. MBTA mm -hmm. board meeting mm -hmm. is um, I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I learned a lot about the constraints mm -hmm. of of what MBTA is facing, mm -hmm. um, about the progress that they have made, about the progress mm -hmm. that they hope to make, mm -hmm. about the investments that they that they have prioritized mm -hmm. given, you know, a very limited budget and a lot of mm -hmm. needs. Mm -hmm. um, and I do think that it would be it would behoove us to be paying attention to those board meetings. Mm -hmm. There is opportunity for public comment mm -hmm. at all of mm -hmm. those board mm -hmm. meetings. Okay. Um, and so if we had somebody who was willing to attend those and, and be thinking about how do we insert ourselves into that conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I do think that one of the most important takeaways for me was, you know, there's st we're still underfunding public transit in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. They have a very limited budget. Mm -hmm. So yes, we could be a loud voice and say, well, we want these things in Concord, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of competing demands right. and perhaps right more you know they're they're prioritizing yeah. their resources in ways that make sense in a lot of but ways. i think i think there's so. a there's a value in um finding identifying needs that the public supports that have wide support that makes sense and um being persistent and repeating them yes. because uh some things are sort of chicken and egg um, um ridership is not what it could be the trains are not full but it's chicken and egg. If you if you if you make it more comfortable, accessible, frequent, et cetera, you'll get more ridership. Another thing that I often think about is Concord is not just a um, uh, uh, a bedroom commuter uh, community. It's also a destination, and the way the MBTA prioritizes certain improvements is based on some usage metric that I think is skewed by the fact that they're not accommodating potential uses that could be much heavier. I um, mean, the idea of coming from Boston to Concord by train sounds for, you know, visitors and tourism sounds like a really good thing to to build on. And it would help other communities probably along the Fishburg line too. Yeah. I just want to finish my thought there, which is just that I think it's important for us to take 
the limitations of the MBTA into consideration mm -hmm. and not just be advocating for the with the MBTA to allocate their resources differently, oh, yeah, much higher up but in the state. allocate, yes. be, be, be talking to our legislators about, hey, we would really like to have better service mm -hmm. and the MBTA is limited in funding. We should have more right. funding for public transit. Mm -hmm. so. All right. So next thing, um, as far as the comprehensive transportation plan, uh, I can tell you. You can tell me what the that, latest uh, um, progress Yesterday is. afternoon, I haven't even looked at it yet because um, it's my third meeting of the day already. Oh, oh. Um, uh, We did get the revised scope from Stan, Stan Tech. Okay. Um, and then I imagine Megan, Steve, and I will go through it. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, the plan is to have Stan Tech come to your to the next June 20th meeting. June 20th meeting. Okay. Um, to go over the that Revised. revision and just have a conversation with TAC on it and okay um and 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 then move forward and, and I get yeah, that beforehand so yeah I think we'd like to get that yeah. get that yeah. soon yeah. so we can look through it and I think that would be very uh, that would be very helpful that's great um okay um one other thing I wanted to mention in regard to the um, transportation plan is that um, I think simultaneously with the what the consultant is doing, um, TAC uh, and the traffic management group and staff, uh, et cetera, can be um, uh, separately or in collaboration trying to think about how to um, kind of build a better system for Ident, you know, collecting needs, filtering them, um, and then figuring out how that information is used um, in prioritizing things. Um, the the uh, you know, and also bringing kind of bringing the public along that you know here here's here's what would need so what support, and here's funding, and and here's what um, trade offs would be, and, and how to kind of um, you know uh, bring that. Um, bring that along um one interesting thing i think to think about with tech is um tax role is um you know consultant data survey that identifies something the long range plan there were subcommittee you know there was a subcommittee on transportation um <laughs> there uh, there were um, uh cut through study there was some other studies parking study um a new parking study with the um uh, planning division, I believe, right? Um, so not a parking study. Okay, a what? It is a um, an analysis Sorry. of the zoning zoning impacts. The zone, zoning no, requirements. The parking requirements under zoning. Okay, it so, is not so, a parking study. Okay, so thank you for correcting me. So, so there's uh, there's the, the the zoning the zoning side of that, which interacts with a lot of interesting things. So, I guess what I'm thinking about is that one potential role for TAC that could be crystallized in a revised charge or not would be to say that TAC tries to um, uh, make, to, to fill in the gaps or co coordinate the picture of transportation needs that potentially should be worked on to address. Uh, and, and for instance, try to um, you know, do the prioritization that that uh, Laura mentioned earlier uh, mm -hmm. in this meeting, and also try to fill in gaps. Um, uh, Nick has mentioned to me about you know one of the problems with the survey is it's sort of self-selected group of people. So are we really meeting the needs of everyone? And I've talked to people who um, you know um, I think have important transportation needs, especially for like public transportation, who um, are probably underrepresented in some of the surveys. They're not, you know, they either don't have a computer or they're not getting out and about and following town business. So I think one function of tech might be to, um, um, you know, serve serve the broader public interest by. Um, uh, filling in these sort of gaps in information in terms of what the public wants. I'm, I'm not expressing it very well, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I appreciate some help. I appreciate some help. It's another kind of, it's another kind of need, which is um, uh, to the extent that we're, we're citizens who are paying more attention to this, 
um, we might see um, uh, need for prioritizing certain things that come out in the survey in sort of a anecdotal or indirect way. Uh, you know, whether it's organized based on locations or based on um, uh, community subgroups that have certain needs. You know, they don't drive. Um, they they want a bicycle more. Uh, they, they, Can I just ask a yeah. clarifying sure. question? Mm -hmm. Are we talking right now about our role within the comprehensive transportation mobility study process, or are we talking about the charge of our committee? Good, Which, good question. Those are two different agenda They're, they're two different things. I mean, they're and, related. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what I'm trying to say is while we think about the while we work with the plan, and I'm glad, I'm very glad to hear we're going to get um, uh, Stantec at the next meeting and uh, with staff having reviewed the um, uh, amended uh, plan of work, um, I think that we can also kind of think about our plan of work, you know, because the things um, I believe eventually are going to come together in that traffic management group, transportation, advisory committee, um, town staff are going to want a comprehensive plan that includes how how it's how it will be used, how it will be um, operated, you know what I mean? So that, you know, anyway, I, I, we'll see what if what if any of that okay. is you're covered. Really, the way I've always thought of it is that we need a, we need a, a process for you, which may, may be driven by planning, but we need a process that says, here's how we consider what the needs are. Here's how those things eventually translate into budgets and, and plans and mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. And here's whose responsibility, whose responsibility is for, for managing the projects. Right. I, you know, I, um, so that I think of that as a process with roles defined and that somewhere in that process is, um, is tack. And you know that's partly governed by our charge, but it's also relates to you know what the responsibilities of the planning division are. Yeah, I think th I, that's a good point. And and public works and, and right. engineering and and and, and um, finance uh, right director too, because um, yeah, I know not everything will be funded by grants. Some will be funded through the town. Um, I, I, I maybe I, maybe I don't have a just maybe it exists and I don't have a clear picture of it. But Elizabeth, I, it's it's my perception that um, that whole process that I was just trying to describe, which is how planning happens and how then budgeting happens and then how implementation planning happens and then how projects are managed, that isn't defined, right? I mean, it's sort of <laughs> maybe it's kind of by folklore. It's how it's grown up over the years is. And the interactions between the departments, to me, it isn't documented, right? Um, so that when a new committee like TAC comes into existence, our role isn't clear. You know, just how far does planning and planning department never had a transport full time transportation person until Aaron began doing the job, right? And now we don't have one. And you're stick it stepping in, so it's it's that vacuum of there not having been historically. Uh, a planning role is 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 part of the issue here. And I I I I think it's an kind of an element, a little bit of an element of a lot of things. <laughs> One, um, there 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 has been no clear established step by step policy on how things happen. Um, that it it kind of started a little bit when um, Public Works went through the first time they did the their complete streets. Right, that was the closest thing to it. Yes, which that was also somewhat done in right. a non-planning vacuum. Right. <laughs> um, so that wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, then you know, TAC was formed. Um, that was also formed in somewhat of a vacuum as far as your charge. So that really wasn't perfect. Right. And there wasn't staff support at the there start. Wasn't staff so support there was no dialogue to do that. But then there was there was also no conversation about right. that um interdepartmental connection and what TAC mm -hmm. was going to 
be doing. So mm -hmm. um, I I think all of us have stumbled, right, stumbled right. along. And what I'm hopeful, and it's my expectation and goal, is you're going to have this transportation plan mm -hmm. uh, kind of similar to how the Envision Concord process works. You you have this overarching plan that you know establishes you know goals, um, helps establish you know high level priorities, um, and then you have the action items to advance that. And one of those action items is going to um, will have to be um, to reevaluate and. Um, redo the complete streets oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, process, but then one of those other outcomes and action items will um, also be, I think, um, somewhat reevaluating the committee's mm -hmm. you know charge and how the committee interacts with the transportation management group, um, and um, also you know I the job description for the town planner um, because the previous job description was done before the town went through uh, a comp and classification mm -hmm. analysis. Um, so we've tweaked the job description a little bit. It has to go to the June personnel board uh, meeting to be approved and then we can post that. So, um, but but even, even that um, position you know, whoever, you know, whoever's in that role um, before that happens. Previously, that conversation when Aaron took over, you know, that role, there was not a clear understanding of, of how even, even she would interact with this committee, mm -hmm. you know, public works, um, right. police, and um, every, everybody was kind of on the bus. But nobody was there's the one purse driving it. There's, and, there's and, no process to find. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> and so I think all of that is, you know, it we're kind of it, it's all starting to funnel down mm -hmm. um, to have that process. Okay, so find. in terms of us looking at what's going to come out of this um, in preparation for the next meeting, the transportation comprehensive plan. So you're I think I'm hearing you say that that plan, the way it's being structured will more or less lay out that process for planning transportation? I, I, I think this that the process discussion is something that's going to happen in coordination with the plan. Okay. It will emerge as part of the plan. Um, um, I don't know if it's going to be in the plan, right? No. Um, but it's going to be discussed as this plan moves forward. Good, it's good. it's, it's yeah. in tandem. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think we necessarily need a consultant to tell us how that process should work. I right. don't think so either. I but I, I but I, and, <laughs> and I think the consensus is at least, you know, among staff yeah. uh, is that in this committee staff um, can come up with a consensus on how that process works. Good. And so I think that is going to happen simultaneously. Yeah. That, yeah. It's, it's a complicated because it involves budgeting short term, um, long term. And and I think stuff. that's that's where you, having better defined roles and responsibilities mm -hmm. um, will assist with that. Mm -hmm. And um, and how I envision it, you know, this committee will work with that, um, you know, the public engagement side of things mm -hmm. to help um, identify and prioritize priorities. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, you know, let's say even the complete streets, work with public works to do that community engagement and take that feedback and, and help have the conversation on priorities. And let's say, you know, fixing Sudbury and Maine is one and Haywood Meadow is two. And, but, and, and once that's established, then it, it goes to the, you know, the town's side of um, the capital planning mm -hmm. um, process. And, um, all right, so is there, you know, oh, here, here's a complete streets grant that we can go for that could that could work for you know, Sudbury, Maine, but kind of wouldn't work for this other one. So we're going to go for that and 
you know, here's some funding. We have an extra $50,000. Well, that's definitely not enough to do this. We're going to have to go out and get, um, I don't, you know, like a, a MassWorks grant for, you know, let's say it was Cambridge Turnpike. Right. But, you know, number four on this list is something that's ready to go. It can move forward. And so it would be, it would be the you know, public works side of things, you know, trying to fit into, you know, staff time and, you know, external request for, availability yeah. of funds and stuff. Yeah. So, so, so that's how I see it happening. I, I think that I, I think that's a good uh, vision for it. The, I I think um, you know two words that I heard that kind of crystallize it are roles. What are roles of various uh, groups or individuals and um, uh, officers and 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 kind of what is the process? And one of the benefits of defining it more clearly, in my mind, is that um, if you you can identify um, opportunities to modify the roles of the process if they're clearly defined and then you see they could be improved. Whereas if they're very vague, it's very hard to know how to implement a better method. You know, I mean, things, conditions change, funding changes, all that. And um, to be sort of agile, um, you know, you need that clarity. Okay, yeah, that's this is good. Um, the next item I just threw on the agenda as an internal TAC discussion. Some people have mentioned to me, uh, just on the spur of the moment, that the West Concord Advisory Committee has a variety of, um, you know, among all their other uh, uh, scope, they have a number of um, concerns that relate to transportation and um, I just looked uh, this morning at the you know web page on the town website, and there's actually a um, uh, bicycle pedestrian um, uh, set of recommendations they have as a document. Um, a lot of things about sidewalks and whatever. Um, so the the question is, and I, I talked to uh, uh, Elizabeth about this a little bit. Um, some people are saying the uh, oh, just have a joint meeting, but having a joint meeting might not be the most efficient way <laughs> to actually um, and appropriately have um, TAC uh, collaborate with West Concord Advisory Committee, either by taking their recommendations into account or um, involving them in other actions. So I just wanted to just kind of air this out within TAC itself and also hear what Elizabeth uh Suggest because that this is also kind of a roles and process thing too with different trying to work effectively with other committees and yep. figure this out. Part of our you weren't here for the meetings that, over the last couple of years, but there's been a um, it's been fairly consistent that the West Concord folks and the West Concord Advisory, not in a formal way but informally, would come to meetings and show us their plans for what was needed in transportation and safety improvements in West Concord and. Public works <laughs> reaction there or elsewhere would be it's a nice picture, but there's no money for it. <laughs> so there's a and I I I I don't want us to get into this continually being that their ideas come here, but we can't do anything. Um. So this is what I talked to Mark about, and that was um specifically the reason um the West Concord Advisory Committee and the Planning Board had a joint meeting because um the committee is. An advisory committee to the planning board. Oh, okay. Um, and and that's very specific in their charge. Good. So they um, the conversation between the two was to look at their charge and help um, a, a establish a framework and expectations uh, on what the committee should be focusing on in support of the planning board. Right. Um, so their charge does talk about um, keeping, you know, in the loop and conversations with public works on projects that are moving forward that have, it could have, or, you know, may have an impact on um, the, the land use and patterns in West Concord. So mm -hmm. if public works moves, engineering moves forward and um, with the redesign of uh, Kenny Dunn Square. So 
yes, that has that has an impact on that you know that land use pattern and and the committee would be involved and provide their comments through the planning board. Um, so they and, and I think um, that uh, that guidance and that understanding of roles and responsibilities has kind of not been established right. for right. a very long time. So, um, you know, the planning board is looking to kind of reestablish that guidance and those roles and responsibilities. Right. Okay. So, um, so I, I, I don't think you'll see, you know, TAC just coming to the Public Works Commission and, I mean, not TAC, the West Concord Advisory Committee coming to TAC or the Public Works Commission. Mm -hmm. um, and, in in that free flowing right. sense, their design. Um, and and another example is um, you know, what Natural Resources Commission does or does not do regarding the removal of the Warner Pond Dam mm -hmm. is is not a conversation for the West Concord Advisory right. Committee because the planning board's not involved. Right. Mm -hmm. You know that's Good. not mm -hmm. that is not a land use. Um, mm -hmm. It's not a a buildable. You know the built environment land use, um, right? You know item. So, does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very well. Yeah. I mean, it, it fits. It fits with the the our short term or medium term goal of of of, of clarifying roles and process. Yes. Yeah. To, to yeah. Help people. I I think that it's helpful. Um, this is that was very helpful for me to understand their charge better. I think one of the things that I keep coming back to is like we have so many policy needs, like transportation policy needs mm -hmm. in, in the town. Mm -hmm. Whereas like design and engineering is very clearly held in public works. You know, uh, the planning board has very clear jurisdiction over, you know, parking minimums mm -hmm. and variances on parking minimums. Mm -hmm. But we like I look I was just looking back at and sorry, this is a little tangential. This is a little no, bit going back important. to the previous conversation, but yeah. I think it's the West Concord Advisory Committee is sort of an in, uh, parallel conversation because mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. trying to figure yeah, out where yeah, everybody I think fits. That's, I think that's in stock. Um, but I look back at like at uh, you know I just I I pulled open the mobility to transportation plan element for Envision Concord, and like I see this 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 task, very clearly defined task. I opened it up very randomly. It says encourage and incentivize carpooling in town. Mm -hmm. And then it like defines that. And I'm like, who owns that? Like that's not planning. I, I, that's not engineering. That's not necessarily the school. That needs a home. And that's a policy mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and a program. But they the need transportation to be, it, the, they mean, need it, to be it, held it, by logically it fits into transportation. And it, it fits into our into our yeah, bucket. Yeah. And um and so just coming back to like we have a lot of very well defined tasks that have been um that have that were outlined in Envision Concord, that were outlined in the parking studies, that were out we have so many studies on the shelf that were outlined in the climate plan. Um so I think that as much as we can take already clearly defined tasks and mm -hmm. just execute on them and be the have one member of the of our committee take responsibility for that and say, okay, I'm going to go and shop this around to all of the people who need to be consulted and involved in this, mm -hmm. but I'm going to be the owner of that question. Like, how do we establish and incentivize carpool? Well, it's, uh, I think I think it might be useful in addition to, you know, in, in the same time that we're focused on, re, you know, clarifying roles in process, um, in addition to a charge, committee could have, uh, this committee could have its own um kind of prioritized action list and then we, we because again I, I i've heard this from different people and i observe it myself and i'm guilty myself when something references a document that's 20 pages long or 100 pages long or 200 pages long as support that is a kind of a perf pro forma support whereas if you say um, encourage carpooling. That's something easily understandable to people, and so a a a prece, a, 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 a simplified listing, or like an you know you know what I'm saying, a policy, and it could be a, a living document kind of work in progress. That like these are some of the um, 
policies uh, TAC would like to, to move forward. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a formal policy document yet, you know, because that gets into a whole nother thing. Again, some, some formal documents, I think, are not very useful or not very effective. Uh, I'd rather see things that are communicable and actionable right. and, and all that and, and, and how to pass that information on to people, um, you know, could involve um, all kinds of uh, uh, groups in town. Um, you know, people can talk about carpooling for tourism, <laughs> carpooling. Nick has mentioned things about, you know, delivery services for businesses and, you know, all kinds of things that, that reduce car use in town. So it would fit under that uh, you know, sing, single occupancy. There's different ways to present it, but if it has a clear, um, logical um, statement that's concise, um, not running 20 pages, I think that could be more. Well, more I, I, I would re recommend maybe we have a, a discussion, probably not at our next meeting because we're going to talk to Stantec, but if you go back to the Envision Concord document, it is very actionable as in, yeah. in the yeah, way we that should you describe. We should review that. You we know, because it's, it's <clears throat> goal and then task, 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 goal, task, 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 task. Like, and not all of them have a clear owner. So I think that going back to that document as we have this conversation, right. it's very helpful. Okay. Um, what I can tell you, so the planning board since 2000 and since the um, Envision Concord plan was adopted, um, took that, the action item it's an excel excel spreadsheet um and um, um we went through and identified every action item that either said planning division or planning board mm. um, we came out to be like 130 something or 140 mm. something items um, and then the planning board it it, it took multiple meetings mm. um went through each and every one and determined um, whether they were, you know, the lead board or, or not, um, and identified who they felt was supposed to be the mm -hmm. lead mm -hmm. board or committee, mm -hmm. um, and then went through and prioritized them, you know, in progress, one to two years out, three to five years mm -hmm. out, more than six. Um, and mm -hmm. they, they go through that list every, every year. Could okay. you send that? I I will I will send it. Yeah, send it around. We we'd um, like to see things that yeah, it, seem and, to and it will be posted the, to the planning board's website. They just did it um two meetings ago. So okay, um, just, so how, how so that it, may be something. Yeah, that may so. be that something like that a you great exercise for guys. Yeah, you know, that you might want to do. Well, and, we seen, and I'll send you just, the clean version of the big ideas. They're only evidence of the objectives, right? They aren't something we've had to deal with separately. Yeah. You know, in the Envision Concord, there are these things called the big ideas. Right. There's the three. Yeah. There's the big ideas, and then under that is the goals. Right. Okay. So those. Yeah. So the way it was, I'm trying to remember the way it was done was the big ideas, then spawn the goals that to implement it. Okay. Good. Yeah. So. With with regard to with regard to this uh, specific West Concord Advisory Committee point, um, Elizabeth, would it make sense maybe for you to help me arrange to talk to the chair of that committee and just clarify roles? Or how how would you see um, the, us? I mean, they asked for something specific. No, they no, not the asked. Chair, the chair did not. Very so that's where. Oh, yeah. So so that's where what we are we are trying to do is. Um, because there's, um, uh, I mean, believe if, it or not, there's a few door. rogue board and committee members. In, yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't. Things. I wouldn't go so far as that. But uh, no, no. I'm just saying. Instance, but on the on the on the West, I, I I have the charge here, and I recommend everybody look at the West Concord Committee charge because, as Elizabeth says, it's, it's you know, the first thing is resource for the planning board, but it also says serve as a resource for other town departments, okay. boards, committees. It says timely input on public works and issues. It's, it is kind of like. Um, uh, a, um, a, a a planning project review board specific specifically to help the planning board cover West Concord citizens right. and businesses and things like that. But um, uh, they do have on their web page a proactive, we need these safety improvements for bicycles and pedestrians. So is that something they throw over the wall to us or is that something... Do you, and you know, this is what I'm trying to say. How do we clarify that yeah. part of right. what so their activity is? Is that in their charge even or not? Um, Maybe no, it isn't. No, no, not 
Not, That's doing not, the planning. Really? <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but I, I think as you know, you said as a resource, mm -hmm. um, if TAC is moving forward with something, and then when the you know the transportation is moving forward, you know, West Concord Advisory Committee will provide mm -hmm. input on that plan. Right. The planning board okay. will provide input on that plan. Right. Um, and you know, if TAC you know wanted to use them as a resource for community engagement or to get mm. their input on mm -hmm. something, they can yeah, use that good. as a resource. We, my, we need, we need to sort of was, write these things down and, and re Right. My, my point was is that there should not be individual members going to other boards and committees making requests. Those should be Going they, through the chair, except as a traffic, except as a uh, as an individual. Yeah, well, their web page needs to be updated as well. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. So, um, so, yes, at this point, it would be you know I would suggest send an email to to Susan, the chair. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. I just, and just wanting to, to touch base yeah. and that this came you know from a member you know a, yeah. a request is. Um, it, it's a well-intentioned suggestion, but it may be subverting the roles and, and process right. in a, in not the best way. You know, and it, yeah. you know, is this you know something that West Concord Advisory Committee you know, um, yeah. you know is is having you know conversation with the planning board on and how you know how can TAC you know okay. be supportive? All right. All right. I I want to move really quick. There's no correspondence I'm aware of. Do we have any liaison? Or anybody on Zoom at all? No, I, I forgot to no. read one more thing. Oh, yeah, record. sure. Go I ahead. just wanted to also, sure. there was one other public comment from um, our previous meeting after we had right. Um, right. we had lost our quorum, which mm -hmm. was Mary Weinberg from Hillside Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, she spoke, I didn't take great notes on her comment, no, but she was involved in the creation of Junction Park and mm -hmm. updates to the West Concord train station. And she voiced some frustration mm -hmm. about a lack of progress in mm -hmm. in making improvements to public transit, to sidewalks, et cetera. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to read that into the record as well, since that was- Thank you very much. Was discussed. So there's no public comment and- um, I uh, just one yeah. thing, uh, Elizabeth, um, there was a com I sent, I think I sent you back an email on it, but um, the issue about grade crossings and whether or not we have any that would qualify for their thing- uh, For elimination? That, well, no issue. Funding. I forget. I apologize for not remembering the detail yeah. of this, but my, the point I tried to make was that uh, Stowe, Old Stowe Road, Hillside Ave, where that bridge crosses, that um, is a safety issue because there's no way for pedestrians to safely cross that bridge or bicyclists. So, so that's that's a different that that particular email dealt with um with their program to eliminate grade crossings okay so this wasn't a grade crossing so it didn't matter for that um, program yeah That's fine. so okay. it's like you know the existing grade crossings were uh, not yeah, going to get I, rid of it, we just might keep in mind if there are grants available for safety or whatever other reason that particular thing that mary has pointed out has been there for 30 years is a problem mm -hmm. and it is a safety issue on a bridge that you know crosses the mbta and oh, is, yeah well yeah, it's, it's, it's a safety issue on you know Main Street where it crosses the Asabet. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a safety no, but, issue but I think on the Long Bridge. At, yeah. the Main Street. We'll de we'll define whose roles and what process collects these things and keeps keeps the updated list. Yeah, because you know then people can have a process to go through. Oh, there's a grant a grant uh, funding round or application round. Let's go through the list. Go, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like a, a part of I think it's part of what we do. So if there's no objections, I will conclude the meeting as we awesome. finish the business.